Mountain Sun. Welcome back to the Comic Lounge Podcast. My name's Ryan, and with me today is my lovely co-host, Jen. And like we said, the last time we talked about this creator, we were going to talk about another one of his books. And we're talking about Chester Brown's paying for it this time. And unlike Ed the Happy Clown, this is this is more of a memoir. This is more nonfiction stuff. This isn't as out there or, you know, just got more of a narrative to it. And basically... The book is, <laughs> it's him paying for sex and his, not, I don't want to say adventures, <laughs> it's not adventures, but just his journey through, like, not wanting to be in a relationship, and him giving his thoughts on, you know, the profession of prostitution or being an escort and stuff like that. And I know you were really excited to talk to me about it because you have a lot of thoughts on it. So I'll let you kind of start with the book. I just wanted to kind of tell people what it was about. But <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> sorry. It's a good. Uh, thank you. It's a it's a good uh, resume of everything. I think uh, we spoke about this when we did the Ed, uh, the Happy Club. But Chester Brown is really good at doing nonfiction. He's really crude. He really goes like straight to the point, and I think that's really like a good uh, strength for this book because. He really talks about those 23 girls that he sees, I think it's from 1994, 1999 to 2010. So it's like a really large, um, like a really large time frame. Um, Mm -hmm. And he's really straight to the point. Like he really describes his experience without any like, um, without, without any frivolous detail like he, it's not it's not embellish anything you really like describe his experience and i think that's really an interesting point of view because i was talking to you about this like outside of camera i think that i like to go read reviews after i finish reading comic and I, when mm-hmm. i read the reviews for this one people were really uh let's say the People did not appreciate this book as much as I did, mostly women, because they thought that Chester Brown was maybe too, like, a little bit too focused on the the physique, like, the, the physical aspect of the girls, the way he described them, the way he described how we choose a girl, right? Because he has to go, sometimes he goes on the website to choose the, the perfect, like, the, the, the right um, worker. Sometimes he's gonna be disappointed that the girl is not as... She is portrayed on the website and it's a lot about like the physical aspect and people were disagreeing and saying that it was a little bit too, um, a little bit too like <clears throat> focused on the physical aspect of a person, right? Like this whole, we need to accept everybody. We need to like love everybody and everything. But I think that these, I'm, I'm going to say this, I don't think they got exactly what Chester Brown was trying to say, right? Because it's still a book right. about it's a book about sex that we like it or not we are attracted to physical appearance of people right we it, it's a factor in the equation like you especially when you pay for a product such as sex you have to choose somebody that you like right and yeah it's a little bit crude and a little bit like direct and it might be offensive for some people but it's still an industry based on what a girl look like, right? It's still like you need yeah. the, the, the their work requires that they have client attracted to them. It's the basic of being a sex worker. <clears throat> so I thought it was in- really interesting to see that people were offended by this side of the book because like we talked about Chester Brown is really crude when he describes something or he, he doesn't like put uh, he doesn't embellish his stories. It's really just the reality of it. And for me, as a woman, I wasn't offended. I thought it was really interesting to see, like, a, a man point of view. Like, someone, like, how they would choose a sex worker based on, like, the the whole process of basically choosing. That was really interesting for me. I I get, I get why people could be offended, but... I think that they're not really understanding kind of like what you said, like what his motivation is for doing the book and for, I mean, paying for sex. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he's kind of, 
he's in a relationship that there's really it's kind of loveless and he just doesn't care his girlfriend at the time comes up to him and she's like i'm attracted to this dude i want to sleep with him i don't know if he wants to but i want to i want to pursue it and but i don't want to give you up and you don't need to move out you can stay like so that in and of itself was kind of odd you know i mean i know that there's people that i guess have open relationships for me i i would never do that that's that's to me that's weird you know, like, if you want to be with somebody, then be with them. If you don't, then, you know, move on. Dude, when you fucking meet somebody, the first thing that you, when you get in a relationship, there has to be that physical attraction. Because you don't really know who the person is yet. You know, when you go up and talk to them, unless you were friends with somebody first, and then the attraction grows from there. You know, like, with me and my lady, like, we, I didn't, like, pursue her. You know, because I, like at first, because like I was like, oh man, I want to get with her. Like we were friends for a long time, and then we got with each other. But that doesn't happen for everyone. So for people to be offended that he was looking for physical attributes to be attracted to when wanting to pay for sex, like that doesn't really make sense. Now, if you want to like get like offended that he's paying for sex and you don't agree with prostitution, that's a better argument. Yeah. To me, but and, but and you also- call you. He he specifically mentioned that he was not in it. He was not doing this to for this the relationship. He was tired of the relationship aspect right. of being right. in love with somebody. He just wanted this, like he just wanted to get off. He just wanted sex, basically. So he was not looking at a personality. He was looking at a physical attraction with somebody, which is a really important point of this book because it's. He was tired of relationship. We are not talking about relationship. We are not talking about connection. We are talking about physical, um, physical aspect. So, I that's why I don't think that these people who like said that it was a little bit like mis- I don't know how to pronounce misogynist. that word misogynist and everything. I don't think they really got what this guy was actually looking for. And it's part of this, like, being a sex worker, I believe, is part of that experience. Like, offering that experience of just pure sex, you know? I don't think they are looking to have relationship with all of their clients or any of the clients at all, you know? Right. I mean, and I think that there's different aspects to, you know, I mean, like, one of the girls gets offended when she's called a prostitute. She's like, she's an escort, you know? Yeah. So, like, I know that... And I think he talks about, like, there's different levels. Like, some some people pay for the girlfriend experience. Exactly. You know, like, they want it to be like that. But And he doesn't, like, ever dive into that. But you do see him, like, while in the beginning, like, he starts, like, having conversations with them. And then some, it's just, like, you know, get in, get out kind of thing. Uh, but, I mean, like, really, to me, at the heart of it, like, from what I took, I, I mean, I'll say this, like, again, at the end, but... Uh, what I took is that, like, he's over relationships, right? He doesn't want to be in one. He doesn't need that. But that he realizes, like, but I do want to have sex. And it's not even like he does this on a very regular basis. It's semi-regular. Like, it's like he'll go a month, right? Yeah. He'll go a couple months without without doing it. And um, but then he really human – like, he really – I don't want to say he makes it okay or less taboo because I think that like depending on where you are in the world, I guess, like, you know, there's levels of yeah. what people look at with that profession. Um, but he really humanizes the profession. He, like he really he he's very sensitive to the industry that he's talking about. And, you know, he's not he's not overly graphic about it. He doesn't, like, make them seem like, oh, man, you're less of a person because you do this kind of thing. Like, he really, um, I don't know, it's, he made me look at it differently, you know, yeah. not to say that I would do it, but, like, I, I mean, it's different. And he doesn't show their faces. He says yeah. that he changes the names. He doesn't show their faces. Um, and he really gives, it's it's hard to give some like in comic books it's hard to give someone a personality when you don't see their face but he fucking he did it really well yeah. i thought you know and how he goes to he'll re- repeat with certain girls and then like he leaves because he's like one of them he like he realizes oh i have 
I'm numb kind of when I when I when I go there now, so I gotta switch it up. Uh, but throughout, right, like he's got his friends that are judging him for doing what he's doing, and he's trying so, to explain to them why there's yeah. no like there there shouldn't have any judgment. There shouldn't be any judgment because he, and he I really love how he's an advocate for sex workers. Right, he explains why it should be legal. He explains why we should have they should have more safety either health safety like physical safety like bodyguards and stuff like they should be more safe because it's a dangerous business but it's still a business it's not like a shameful uh, action he describes it really as a job and not as like a we like the way that some people portray it as a weird way of living it's a job they're doing this as their day-to-day -day job and i really love that aspect of the book that he's really trying to explain why it shouldn't be taboo yeah and i think that uh I, i mean like i said depends on where you are in the world whether or not it's looked it's looked at differently in america right like it's definitely like people are going to to judge no matter what sex you are if you're doing yeah. that right um and i i don't know that that will ever change but i think that you know I mean, they always say it's the oldest professions, you know? <laughs> I mean, I don't agree with... I, I mean, look, I would never wish that upon anybody I know, you know what I mean? Like, that you that you do that, but I mean, it also depends on the way you look at sex. So, like, that's also another thing, right? Like, he's look, not looking at sex in the intimate... Um, there's no intimacy. Exactly. It's literally just, I want to do this action, and, and that's it. Like, almost like I'm going to the gym. Kind of. I mean, I don't know. I'm trying to think of another analogy, but that's kind of what it is. Oh, I'm going to call. I'm going to go do this real quick, and then I'm going to leave. Now, sometimes within these encounters that he has with the girls, there's a little bit more to it than just the action of having sex. So there's the, you know, he does have conversation. He does talk to them. He does share a little bit of his own personal life with them, you know, being a cartoonist. And then eventually telling them, oh, I'm working on a book about... yeah. You know, <laughs> she's all, oh, man, I'd read that, you know. And so there's like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of cool moments um, to where you almost f are taken out of the fact of what he's doing. You know what I mean? Like, you'd almost like, I, for I didn't forget, but like, I was almost like, oh, that's just pillow talk. Oh, wait, no, he's paying this girl to be there. You know, like, yeah. he's not. And um, I don't know. I think that I didn't really read. I know you told me to check the comments. I did click like whatever the first like couple were on Goodreads, but I didn't want it to inform too much of yeah. my uh, my own opinion. So I didn't, but I did see like a lot of people did not did not rate this very high, and I think that that's I think that that's uh, they're ignorant to what the point of the book was, you know, yeah. because he really is an advocate for um, you know not le not necessarily legalizing it, but Kind right, of taking just off having rights. And taking the stigma away of yeah. what it is, you know, because like some people think like, oh, a streetwalker, right? Somebody that's standing on the corner and, you know, looks trashy. But in here, that's not the case. And there is l different levels, you know, like he goes to some places that are really nice and he goes to some places where they're not so nice, you know? Yeah. But I think that it, This is like, this is the book that I think people should read before Ed ha The Happy Clown if yeah. they want to check out Chester Brown's stuff. Or maybe some of the other books. Like he talks about Lu Louis Riel. Uh, I think in here he's, I think he's doing the tour for the book, right? I think in the middle of this. Because this does span a large amount of time in his life. Yeah. So, you know, I, I want to check, like this even more so made me want to check out the other stuff. I just I'm trying to decide which one I pick up first because he does have a lot of other books and um, yeah, he's really good at writing and fiction and he's really he has a really special point of view. He's really like I said, he's really direct. Reading, uh, paying for it, it was really interesting to have his point of view as a customer. Right, this is not something that we see often for this industry. We usually hear the point of view of the people working in the industry, like being a sex worker, either a male or a female. Um, but having someone describing the experience as a customer 
was really interesting for me. And I really love how um, we can see different, like you said, different levels. Like girl, some girls work alone, some girls work for an agency, some girls work for maybe trashy people, like people who are, are not, clearly not in, like clearly do other businesses on the side that are not legal. And mm -hmm. it was really interesting to see that the sex industry is, is so, we all hear stories, we all know what it is about, but having this insight as to what it, like it can be from like this level to this level of safety and then um, how, where it is, like where it happens, sometimes it happens at the girls' apartment, sometimes it happens at uh, uh, like a house, like a house with, where everybody's there. Um, it's just eye-opening in so many other levels and I really love this aspect of the book. This this was for me like really, it's really informative, I think. And all of Chester Brown's books are really informative, except at the Happy Clown. <laughs> uh, yeah. But all, all of his nonfiction work is really informative because like I said in the previous episode, he does a lot of research. And maybe like paying for it is not research, it's more like his own personal experience, but other of his books like Pluriel, there's a lot of research behind it, and it really shows in his work. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, the research is there, you know, like he, like, what is this, like, fucking 50 pages? Like, 50, like, over 50 pages in the back of this book, his yeah. notes. And I, and I love that he does that. I love that. I read, like, like, again, I read some of it because I feel like if I read too much, then I would almost be reporting his own thoughts on his book. And I don't yeah. want, I don't want to do that, you know? So I did read the, I read the intro and I read a little bit of the afterward, but it's really, to me, this is two different things going on. This is him kind of reporting on this industry, but it's also him sharing his own views on relationships, Yeah, you know, and really explaining, it's just explaining why he doesn't really kind of want to do them anymore. And he's done and he doesn't, he doesn't believe in them anymore but then kind of at the end he realizes that he's kind of making a connection with this one girl who's not even seeing anybody else but him so she yeah. is getting paid by him but she's exclusively only doing it with him so it's it's kind of like that one was i was like weird so i was like she's not really a sex worker except with him you know, she's, she's not in, really... like an exclusive. Yeah. Like they so have it's... an exclusive relationship between sex worker and client, which is also an interesting fact. Like it's an interesting end yeah. of, well, yeah, end of the story. It's, it's everything in it is interesting and it's yeah. different point of views. Yeah. I really, I, I liked it. And he doesn't, and I like the way he depicts himself, you know, cause like you could, you could always make yourself kind of look a little bit better if you're drawing yourself or writing yourself or make yourself seem better but he doesn't he's very it's very raw with the way he depicts himself the the way he's depicting these encounters he uh there's no shame yeah in any way what he's what he's describing to us what he's telling us about himself about the uh other girls and i think this is fucking i don't i really don't understand how anybody could not take these same feelings away of this again was just very strong uh cartooning it just by, shows uh, that it's a, it's still a really taboo right it's a subject really sensitive and we still need to talk about it more and these like comic books like this or any other books like talking about such a subject just brings bringing out different point of views is really what is gonna bring that subject from taboo to like a regular subject right because that's the whole point like um a sex worker is still a human being and mm -hmm. we often we never talk about a sex worker as a human being we talk about a sex worker as a sex worker and that's something really like it's just the way that society works because it's still like a shameful you know like just for example all the people that has an only fan on Instagram. When you see this, you're like, oh, like, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I'm yeah. not gonna say, but people, most of the time, people are gonna insult them. But I mean, it's their own, it's their own body. They can do whatever they want with it. And that's something that we should talk about more. And Chester Brown actually, in the notes after he talks, there's um, a section when he says, um, like, 
the title is like their own choice or um because i read it in french i don't know their proper english translation but basically he talks about the girls choosing what they want to do with their own body and he just explains that it should be their own right it should be their own they should have the full power over what they do with their own body and that's exactly i think the yeah. kind of message that we should like be spreading in the world you know yeah i mean i, I mean the way he look he does sexual rights more on the normalization of prostitution he does um you know johns don't buy women power all this stuff like he's you know self-respect money's influence like he he really goes very deep and uh how how you can't respect that level of attention to detail and the the honesty and the just everything that he does with his stuff already like with these two books that i've read it's easy to it's it's just becoming more um or it's becoming easier to see why this dude is so celebrated and yeah. why he is regarded so well regarded in the in the comic book community and the comic book scene because it is really good like i mean you know on surface level you hear oh this dude's writing about his escapades with prostitution you know but it's that's that's like so it it doesn't give it enough you're it's not uh it's not a fair assessment of what you're really getting from this book is, is yeah. what i'm trying to say yeah i think it's it's not offensive I mean, I don't even think if, you know, I mean, like, I don't even think women should really be offended by it because I don't think he is offensive to women at all, both in the way he talks about women yeah. or the way he's depicting them. I mean, I this is not offensive. I wasn't offended at all. I thought it was actually really brilliant. And I thought it was super cool the way he was talking about this subject. I thought it was refreshing to not have an ounce, an, an ounce of, like, of shame there's there's no shame in this book and that was really refreshing as a woman to read a book about prostitution without shaming anybody you yeah. know it was yeah. amazing to read that and it was there's no shame there's no he doesn't talk like there's no taboo the way he talks about it is it's just a normal subject he just talks about it he just shares his experience and at the end he just talks about The, the different aspect of the industry it's just fluid and mm -hmm. that was really cool from my perspective to read that yeah he's not, and he's not gratuitous at all like even when these encounters happen like the the camera kind of like it pans out like you're not yeah. like zoomed in on the actions of what what are taking place you know so i think that that also kind of makes it to where it's not i mean yes there's nudity but it's not it's not very uh you're not like you're not like staring at the fucking yeah. anything going on you know so i think that i i think that uh i, I kind of i i want to find more books that kind of deal with uh more taboo subjects in this kind of way i don't know i mean i don't think he did any other books that deal with other subjects like this but um, not necessarily this subject but I mean, it's it's interesting to see a taboo subject done in such a way that you're, it's not offensive at all, even though some people yeah. were offended. So, I love I love the book, man. I think it's awesome. I think, uh, I I read it in one sitting too. I couldn't I couldn't put the book down. Yeah, you know, it was really really good. The only yeah. thing I the only thing the only thing is I wish that the page was just a little bit a little bit bigger. So that I wasn't straining my my eyes when I was reading. That was the only thing, you know, like, because it's small. All the panels are very, like, the the book size is very small, you know, like, compared to a regular size comic. But I think mine is bigger, though. Well, I have the French version, but... Is, no, it, is it bigger? I don't know. This is, this is uh, next to a regular size comic book, so... Oh, yeah, I think mine is bigger, because, look... Oh yeah, yours is a little bit, just a little bit yeah. bigger. Yeah, I don't But know. It's maybe it's just eight, this version. There's do you get this? There's eight um, square. I don't know what we call that. Um, yeah, yeah same. Eight. I have eight. Yeah, it's just, it seems like it's smaller. I mean, yeah, I think my my version is a little bit smaller than yours, which it's not. You know, again, I mean, that's that's just me being particular. But um, it, it's kind of like the Happy Clown. Like the yeah, like the the text is really small to read. So, 
I mean, it's like another book that I read not that long ago, and now they're doing a larger version of it, which I'm like, fuck, I wish I would have just waited to buy the fucking <laughs> other version. But, um, you know, that's that's neither here nor there. I think this book is really dope. I think that people should definitely check out Chester Brown's stuff. And I would say check either this book or, you know, even the other books I haven't read yet. Check those out before you check out at the Happy Con because that was my first foray into his work, and I could, and I admired his cartooning, I admired his stuff, and I was into it and enough to want to read more. But this is a better, um, this is a better view at who he is as yeah. a as a creator, you know. So I mean, I I, I definitely recommend this book to people. I definitely yeah, I definitely. Check it out. Even if you're going to be offended, I still recommend you read it because he has a really interesting point of view. He's gonna, you're gonna learn something, and you're gonna, like, if you're offended by the subject or you're offended by the way he talks about it, you're like being offended. Maybe, like, maybe this book is gonna bring you knowledge or a different perspective that you, like will realize why you're actually being offended by this book you know you know what i mean he has yeah. this like way of just expressing a point of view and yeah he has because he's really crude he has this way of offending people but there's always you always like he makes you think and that's something that i really appreciate about a good writer is that he makes you think about a lot of things when you read his books yeah, I mean, even if you don't agree with being, you know, escorts of a project, he kind of, at least for me, because, like, I don't agree with it. Not, I don't, I don't want to say I don't agree with it, but, like, it's it's not something that I'm ever like, oh, yeah, that's, like, I, I don't think about that. It's not in my everyday, in my everyday life where I'm, I'm thinking about, oh, I wonder what, what prostitution's rights are like, or, you know, but I don't think about <laughs> it at all. So to see him portray this whole industry and to give his personal thoughts on it to where it dives deep into like you know how it should be safer and all that stuff you know and like his friends and how they're combating him so you can almost put like all those people that were leaving those comments are like his friends and don't agree with it and don't agree with him and he's you know he's defending their rights and he's defending his decision to do what he does and yeah. he does it in a way to where you're like okay I, I I see what he's saying. I kind of agree with him, you know, even if it's not something that's for you or something that is, you know, even if you don't necessarily agree with escort work or prostitution, like he kind of, he makes it seem like, okay, like I, I see his defense and it makes sense. Yeah. You know, exactly. So I, I, I mean, I don't, I, th you know, I, I will say this. I saw one person like they're, uh, one of the reviews I saw was that, oh, it's literally just him talking about his different encounters. That's 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 what the book is. It's just for a, a way for him to talk about him having sex. No. And I was like, that's such a, like, did it's like you didn't even read it. How could, like, <laughs> there's so much more to the book. And it, you're, you dive more, it's more diving into his own head. Exactly. Than really, than really talking about the industry. I mean, he does talk about it. But it's really more, what is this guy going through? Why is he deciding that I don't want to be in relationships, but that this is okay? And you, and then his, his really, the change he goes through psychologically of like how, how he perceived the industry from the beginning. Because in the beginning, he's like, his outlook is way different than where he ends up at the end, you know, yeah. over the course of a few years. So I think that. And sometimes you, know, you have to read between the lines. Sometimes yeah. he's, he's going to portray a story, but if you're not able to read between the lines, you're not able to really grasp the message. And there's a lot of hidden messages in what he says and the way that the dialogues are made and the way like that everything is portrayed. It's You have to read between the line. And if you're not able to do that, this is not the book for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is not this is not like a book that necessarily i i could recommend to everyone and and there was another book that came out this week that was not offensive well I, this book wasn't offensive to me but i could see why some people could be but the, there's a book that came out this week that was highly offensive to people and i had to like be very careful in terms of like who i recommended it to this is easier to recommend but 
it's when it's a taboo subject, it's like you can't necessarily be like, hey, check this book out. It's really good. You know, but I think that if people can kind of get over themselves and appreciate the book for what it is and what it's doing and the way in which he's delivering it, then I think that anybody could pick this book up. You know, yeah. I think that this is definitely like I, I would put this in my picks at work. This is a yeah. book I would put on that shelf because I think that it's it's just an important it's an important piece of comic book literature. You know, it's not it, it's special. You know, I think his yeah. work is special. I think that he is a special kind of creator that, uh, you know, everybody should everybody should read his stuff. Pick up any of his books, you know, but I think that this is a good one to start with for sure. Yeah, 100 percent. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, think we'll hard, cover everything. OK, yeah, it's hard for me to think of anything else really to say other than it's phenomenal. I mean, yeah. I gave it a four. But, you know, after, like, discussing it, I feel like I should have gave it a five because, like, you have to take into account, like, the way this dude writes and the way he fucking, like, like, talk about, like, bonus content, you know? Like, yeah. it's not it's not sketches, but, like, the amount of work he puts into the notes and the appendix, like, that's probably more work than it was to actually draw the book and write the book because like he's really really fucking giving you something to really you know you know bite your you know uh to latch on to you know what i mean yeah. like to really like dive further in to what he is trying to portray and i and like i said i i go i want to read it i just didn't want it to inform too much of what i said because i didn't want it to be me regurgitating his own thoughts on his stuff and i wanted to like um I, w I wanted it to just be wholly my opinion, and that's why again I didn't read the I didn't read too many of those uh, reviews. Now I'm going to when we, when we <laughs> stop recording because I really want to see. I wish that you could you can reply right. Yeah, you can. You reply. can reply. Yeah, I can. On good, I I read them on Goodreads, and you can reply. Okay, I think I might reply to some people. <laughs> I want to get some conversation going, and I would really really love, and I'm sure you would love too, uh, for people to that have read the book or if you haven't read it and then you read it after listening to us throw your comments down below because i would really love to see what people thought of this book because this isn't this isn't your normal comic book this isn't your normal graphic novel um but it is phenomenal it yeah. is such such a good book and i know that we're going to be talking more chester brown in the future as soon as i get some more stuff so <laughs> um yeah i mean that's all i got and uh this is a book club episode, but I'm, I'm, we're recording stuff like in advance now, so um, I, I don't know when this will drop, but I know that we have some other books we're going to talk about. And if you are not already following us, make sure you uh, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at The Comic Lounge. Follow Jen at Life of a Geeky Mind on Instagram. Uh, check out our Thought Balloon series that's on here, too. Jen's also done other book club episodes with me. And um, make sure you like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video goes up. And on that note, we're out.